good? Yeah. Are you, have you started recording? Yeah. All right, man. What's your name? Huh? What's your name? You can call me Jigaboo, Jigaboo Jones the third, or I go by Chibu. C H I B U. All right, Chibu. Nice to meet you. I'm Guillermo. So. Guillermo, nice to meet you. I have a question for you. Talk to me, brother. Talk Do you keep me. up with politics at all? Oh hell no! Oh, oh. You feel me? But when it but when it comes again, them PVP loan checks, and um and the COVID relief checks, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? And EBT, yeah. Are you are you content or happy with I guess like Joe Biden's administration currently? Like, do you like how America's looking under his administration? Make America great again. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> I'll be honest, bro. I don't watch the news or politics at all because all I just see is negativity on. I like to smile. I like to be happy. You feel me? So all that stuff that, that's going on with the, leave that to the old niggas. I'm good off that. Um, just bring Obama back. Yeah. Obama, we miss you. Like, real talk. Well, Obama has been president, or he was, he served his term and stuff, right? Uh -huh. So do you miss, do you, do you miss Donald Trump's administration or do you miss, or do you like Joe Biden? Do you like more expensive things, more expensive gas? Do you like what? No, you're good. So what? Because there's there's a lot going on between the border crisis. There's a lot going on. You have to pay more in gas. You have to pay more oh, in taxes. Man, them gas prices is too damn high. Wait, wait. So when Trump was the president, it was low. Bring Trump back now. I'm not jacking it. Gas is too much. I'm sick and tired of it. Niggas got the V8 engine car, and I got to spend at least 90 for the tank. No, no, no. I'm not doing that. I want Trump in the office right now, or the Obama. F that old nigga Biden. He got dementia. He got alopalica too. He losing his hair, bro. You feel me? All right. So, so, you know, if it was Trump or Biden again, who would you vote for in 2024? Um, I don't think a nigga like me should be voting. I'm too immature. Way too immature. You feel me? How old are you? 19. You're 19? Yo. Dang, dude, that's crazy. So, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna say Trump because of the business standpoint. Yeah. He's going to keep that money inside my pocket, you know? Yeah. He's going to keep that my money twerking. The cash flow is going to keep on going. Biden? Biden! Stop it. I need my ham now. You feel me? I need my ham. I need my bread, you feel me? They took too much money from taxes last year, too. Like, it's too much. I'm sick and tired of um, the Biden administration. Matter of fact, they should make me president. I'm not going to lie. Free BBLs for everyone in Miami. I got you. I got you. You'll get my <laughs> vote, man. Appreciate you. All right. Big BDA Big BDA All right, well, there you go. He's not really affiliated with politics, but he chose Trump over Biden. So let's let's go ask other people. All right, what's your name? Lexi. Lexi, nice to meet you, I'm Guillermo. So, Lexi, um, I'm predominantly conservative, right? Correct. But I'm not a fan of the current administration. I think you can agree to that as well, I assume. Some of it, yes. Okay, gotcha. So my question for you is then, are you, are you, are you happy and content as an American citizen of like the current administration with how they're running the country in general? Yes and no. I think some of the things that are being implemented are really important. Like, um, I guess like the pro-choice stuff, a lot of people are very pro-choice. Personally, I'm pro-life, but I think that it's not my place to decide for somebody else, right? However, I'm not happy with things like HB 999. I think that's very unfair to a lot of people in the institutions. Wow. What do you think about just the the American, not American, the borders crisis going on right now as well? Honestly, I, I'm not happy with it. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot that we can do. It's uh, kind of like when you're going home, right? You go to your house, you mm -hmm. expect to be the only person in your house. You don't yeah. expect a random person to let themselves in, mm -hmm. right? They have to ask permission, yeah. and I think that's really important. Yeah, because my parents are from Venezuela, and they they just became American citizens like like several months ago. And it's a bit unfair, the thought of like how much work and how much they had to put into it. And then you have people just like crossing illegally, right? I think I, I think it's great that people have a desire to be in this country, but I'm not a big fan of of how it's being done because it is immoral, it's unethical, and it's not fair to the other immigrants who are now citizens, who who you know it's almost like it, all they did was thrown to the trash, like it was worth for nothing. You know what I mean? I agree. Yeah. Okay. So I I want to ask you this as well, since uh, you say you're predominantly conservative, right? So we got we we got the three guys who have the eyes right now: Trump. Um, Vivek and Ron DeSantis. Between those three, right, let's just say things don't work out for Trump for whatever reason. Who else would you want to represent the, the pr Republican primary for 2024? Oh, I'm so educated on this. So I actually have a bachelor's of science in political science. 
So um, I actually think Vivek Ramswani is going to be an awesome president if he gets the opportunity. And if he doesn't, I think he'd be a great vice president for DeSantis. My thing with DeSantis is he's in the middle of a term. Mm -hmm. I think finish your term here in Florida and then come back and try to run the country. I'm worried Trump might not win. He will win the primary if he wins the primaries, but I don't see him winning the overall vote, right? Because we've seen how that's played mm -hmm. out. So it'd be really nice to see a new generation of Republicans coming in. Yeah, here's my take on that though, because I, I, I agree with you, but here, here's the alternative view. So the problem with Trump is, I think that DeSantis has a higher chance, if, he, if it's him versus the Democratic Party, right? I think DeSantis has a better chance with winning the overall presidency over Trump because of the fact that Trump, like you said, he already tried it. And on top of that too, DeSantis, like, you know, he has to take a shot now because eight, four, eight years from now, no one's gonna remember what he did in Florida, like unlike you and I, right, as Floridians. Um, so what, what, what do you think is the tactic that should be done now? Because it looks like Trump is in the favor for the Republican party, but what do you think DeSantis should do as a tactic specifically him? I think that he needs to go to some other swing states and some Democrat states and talk to them. Talk to the Republicans there, because those are the Republicans you want to talk to, because that's yeah. where a lot of Trumpies are. I'm from Pennsylvania. Lots of Trumpies in Pennsylvania from the Republican Party. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lexi. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so what would you think of the video? I thought, well, f first of all, that first guy was very entertaining. Yeah. I mean, that was... That was wild. I think I think while it was entertaining and uh, and funny on a shallow level, I think uh, if that is the future of our country, we're we're in trouble. You know, that's that's not good. Um, I think on the other hand, though, um, the second girl who spoke, Lexi, yeah. um, I think she said a lot of um, a lot of apt things. Um, she brought up the the border control stuff. Yeah. I thought that was good. Um, and then I liked what she said. The thing I liked the most is what she talked about how, like, a, a bringing in a new generation of Republicans, a new generation yeah. of conservatives, because she's right. Like, Trump had his shot, you know? Mm -hmm. he, um, he did it for four years. I think he did a pretty good job. Yeah. I think he might have, um, he could have handled some things better mm -hmm. um, with the media or, you know, like, like, like just, you know, being... Um, uh, angry on Twitter, yeah. you know, but overall, I think he did a pretty good job. But like, he, he's old, he's old. I think he, he's either two years younger than Biden or two years older than Biden, I right? Think he's younger, yeah. Um, so I would just love to see a new young guy. Yeah. I don't want to see another old president, even though Trump, Trump was fine, you mm -hmm. know. I would love to see a younger president, yeah. And so, back to the whole video stuff, right? Because when I was filming this at the moment, mm -hmm. I was going around. I was like, yo, do you want to be an interview? Interview? Do you want to be a part of, of a thing or whatever? Yeah. And so a lot of it was, I don't, I will say I probably shouldn't have gone there that day specifically because a lot of mm -hmm. people were plastered that I was trying to get on or talk to. Yeah. You know, college culture or whatever. Yeah. But the common thing was either sobriety or just like the overall, oh, I don't know enough, or I, which is fine. You know, yeah, I, that's I think fine. everyone that's has fine. the right to not know enough. You guys can go if you have to. Um, which is totally fine. It's just like a matter of, um, you know, if you don't know enough, that's totally fine. But it's like, you know, at least know something like you don't have to like, yeah, you oh. live in this country. And if you're at college, you, you're an adult, exactly. like you, you are, you are responsible for, for your part in this yeah. nation. Like sure. You, it, you might, um, you might not think you'd be able to make a change, but it's, it's good to have good political, like, um, like political efficacy, if you know what yeah. I mean. Like, like believe that you can make a change because you can. Like, not maybe not by yourself, but collectively, like yeah. as as a group of people, we can. And I think it's important to remember that. I agree. I mean, you do want to know, hey, who's who is in charge of the country I live in? Who's leading right now? Mm -hmm. Whether it's left or right, whether it's conservative, liberal, whatever. Like, you don't have to agree, but it's mm -hmm. good to have that that I guess that basic knowledge or that basic concept of who yeah. who it is. And I guess that was the sad part. Is like I. Like, honestly, honest to goodness, I would have loved to have, you know, because we're conservative and stuff, I would have loved to talk to someone who is left-leaning or Democrat, mm -hmm. like, like, that's their political affiliation, ask them why, and get their perspective, right? But not even that, you know, it was really hard, and and, and it's kind of sad, too, because, like, like, politics, it's a good thing to talk about. It's not, it's not bad. You see, I always say this all the time. Politics aren't divisive. People are divisive. Mm -hmm. And so I think it should be fine to have people of opposing views 
and and you should still be able to have a mature, stable conversation with them, right? Yeah. And I think the sad part is I was, I was telling Naum, who filmed that video, and I, I told him, I was like, I'm willing to bet, like, if I asked them, hey, like, what's your body count or what's the craziest encounter you've ever had? I would have gotten, like, 10 or 20 plus people to be in the video. But I couldn't find anyone. Like, that guy was yeah. trying to be funny, which was, which was great and stuff. And then Lexi was, like, the only other person who I who said yes, basically, because mm-hmm. she understood. And I didn't, like, I didn't ask one person, and I wasn't like, hey, would you like to be a part of this video? And they were like, no, sorry, um, I don't like to talk about policy. It was literally just like, I don't know enough, or they they just weren't sober, you know? Yeah. And it really is sad, because that's our generation. Yeah. You see, the older, you, I love and miss, like, old school Democrats, where, like, we could, it, was, it wasn't blue-haired Nancy, or... It wasn't like, oh, my body, my choice, yelling it out. It was mm-hmm. just like, hey, mm-hmm. like, like very calm, cool, like, like just chill liberals, you know? Yeah, no, people treat each other as people, not yeah. like, oh, you're not my political party. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to affiliate with you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so. No, it, it's sad. I remember one time, too, this is kind of random, but I remember, like, with the whole BLM nonsense, right, when mm-hmm. everyone was acting like a hero and they, they thought they were doing something by posting a black square online. Yeah. Um, I remember one time, I like, like this girl who's like very far left-leaning, she's pretty woke. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up with her and stuff. And so she, she like posted something about BLM. Mm-hmm. And then I swiped up to her. This was on Snapchat, so I swiped up to her story. I was like, hey, you know, I just want to get a better understanding. I was very, very nice, very simple. Yeah. I was like, hey, I just want to get a, under, a better understanding. When you say BLM, do you mean like like the fact that all black lives matter? Or do are you just talking in support of the organization? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she goes, um, BLM. And then she just unadds me and blocks me on everything. Like it, it's some childish crap. And I'm just like, what are you doing, man? You know, yeah. it's like it's stuff like that that's uncalled for. And that's mm-hmm. that's very, very sad. Um, because you really, like it's hard to find like a, someone with like ordinary views from the left side yeah who will have a civil cool calm and collective conversation very yeah. rare. i've had a couple but it's hard you know yeah i think um i think like one of the the bigger problems is that like we have we have all these things right like blm we have people who are very strong in their um belief for or against abortion mm-hmm. we have people who um are, are very entrenched into their political party and the problem is like it's very simple it's an identity not rooted in christ right Amen. people make their identity rooted in their race so yeah. if anyone is against blm oh I, i'm not going to talk to that person why because they made their identity blm oh oh this person is not the same party as me oh i'm not going to talk to them they yeah. they're like because they they make their identity rooted in in something like that mm-hmm. in, in abortion in blm in whatever you know, the liberal liberal part or the democratic party yeah. and so when when you challenge um when you challenge those beliefs you're not you're not challenging um some one or like a, one little belief of theirs right you're challenging their whole identity yeah which is why i think people respond so aggressively yeah. because they're making their beliefs their political beliefs who they are um and obviously that just that can't lead to anything good yeah. conservative or democratic um, Republican or I agree liberal. because there are some like I don't want to say radical because that's not much of a thing but more so like like some quote unquote crazy conservatives right to where mm-hmm. like it's like a, oh like f Biden like the, yeah. the like the what's that thing they always say the let's go Brandon thing yeah which I, to my knowledge is like an alternative to basically f Joe Biden that's right. yeah exactly yeah. and it's sad because it's like that's not what whether you're conservative liberal whatever. Like, I get that not everyone's a Christian, but even mm-hmm. if you're conservative, I think, like, if we're going to be the higher end of the party, like, we should also still be respectful and loving. Yeah, and treat nice, others you know? with respect. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what, when when Trump was in power, I remember a constant um, complaint from conservatives and Republicans was that the liberal party was so rude and disrespectful yeah. to the president. And he, he was the president and people were being rude. And then, and then of course... We did the exact same thing yeah. when Joe Biden came into power. Yeah. Um, the news constantly berating him and and just being, uh, I mean, completely dehumanizing the way they were they would speak about him. And yeah. so it's it's a problem on both ends now. Um, and I think people just you, you got to go back to like, hey, whoever this person is, I'm yeah. gonna treat them with basic respect. Yeah. Um, no matter their belief. Yeah, that's true. Let's talk about that for a second. So so 2024 is around the corner. Time flies back flies mm-hmm. real quick. Um, you know, Trump, Vivek, and DeSantis, Mm -hmm. everyone's got their eyes on them. Everyone's talking about them. Everyone's focused. Like what's, did you, did you watch the, 
the debate like a, a few weeks ago? I did not. No. Okay. So the, let me fill you in on a couple of things. First of all, Trump wasn't there because that was his whole, you know, invite in, indictment thing um, mm -hmm. with with his uh, with his thing going on. Um, it was Vivek Pence, Nick, Nikki Haley, Charlie Crist, DeSantis. Um, I'm missing like one or two more people, but mm -hmm. like, they're not really that important. Um, so initially, it was just a little chaotic, but it was like people standing their ground. Vivek was is basically like a lot of people are talking about how he's not bought out by the, his donors, by the bigger guys, and he's a billionaire apparently. Yeah. Um, but he's like new, he's fresh, um, and so a lot of people are, have his eyes on him for sure. DeSantis, as Floridians, we have our eyes on him as well. But it, yeah. I, unfortunately, I don't think that's the same standard for the rest of the country. Yeah, I agree. Because, uh, because like, a lot of people are focused on Trump, right? Mm -hmm. So in your eyes, right, what is, like, the perfect scenario where who would you want being president, who would you want being VP, and who would you want representing the Republican Party for 2024? I know that was a lot to throw around. Yeah, no. Um I think I think you're right about how our our view is a little bit skewed because we've had DeSantis as our governor, yeah. so it's easy to um, to think like like Florida's hype about DeSantis, you know, mm -hmm. and it feels like really good, but like the rest of the U.S. isn't actually like that. Yeah. Um, but I I would like to see DeSantis in power. Um, I think partially because I am familiar with him, right? He's been our governor for what? Since 2018. 2018. Yeah. So yeah. five years, six years by the time of the election. Yeah. Um, so I'm familiar with him. Uh, I think he's done a great job as governor in Florida. Mm -hmm. He did a great job through COVID, and that's not that's not just what Caden says. That's what that's what everyone says. Yeah, exactly. That is like like uh, Democrat Republican doesn't matter. Florida was a swing state, mm -hmm. and now it's red. It, yeah. it, is, it is on paper. It is a red state, mm -hmm. and that's that's partially thanks to DeSantis and also the blue states yeah. that decided to do a crappy job during COVID. But yeah, sorry. I agree. No, you're good. Um, so. That being said, I, I think um, I think he's done a lot of great things for Florida, and I think he could do a lot of great things for the U.S. Um, he's young. I think he's very down to earth. He's a he's a humble guy. From what I've seen, of course, mm -hmm. I, of course, I don't know him personally. I can only say what I've seen. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I would love to see him in power. And I think for vice president, again, like I, I'm sticking with young people. Mm -hmm. I I don't want to see Trump as the vice president. I don't. That might make DeSantis's case better yeah. if he was but I don't care I I would prefer another young person I would like to get um more young people in power because I think that'll have a chain effect where it'll make more young people interested in politics and make yeah. more young people care um because like a big complaint from people our age constantly is like why is it always a bunch of old men and they're right like mm -hmm. why is it a bunch of old, old yeah. men you know so uh I would like to see DeSantis as president and Vivek as um vice president um and just see what would happen, you know? For 2024 specifically? 2024. Okay. Gotcha. So, so Trump, if it, like, is a no-go on your picture, on yeah, your Yeah, I, I think, um, Trump is just not my preference okay. right now. I, I am very for the Republican Party. I, I would much rather see a Republican in power than a Democrat in power, but Trump is, like, my, one of my last picks. Mm -hmm. Um, just, just because, um, I think he did a good job as president last time. I think the uh, the things he said on social media weren't very presidential. Yeah. You know, um, like the whole thing with the indictment, like, um, like I, I just kind of, whether he did it or not, whatever, I just expect leaders, whether it be spiritual, um, government, like whatever it is, like yeah. to be above reproach. Mm -hmm. And Trump is not above reproach mm -hmm. at all. Um, the number of things he's been accused of, and, and and I understand he's under a lot of, not pressure, but under a, like he's under the microscope, basically, yeah. you know. So I get that, um, but he he's just not my not my first choice. Okay, gotcha. So, um, okay, that 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 is an interesting view because here's the thing. Okay, so mm -hmm. as much as I would love to see DeSantis in power representing the Republican yeah, Party, yeah, we know that's that's not gonna happen. Yeah, unfortunately, because yeah. because of the fact that the polls show it, mm -hmm. the numbers say it. Um, and then you look as well with all the stuff that's being thrown at Trump versus DeSantis, because the media knows that um, Trump is a threat. That's mm -hmm. why they're because think about it. If all the stuff they're trying to throw at him was valid, mm -hmm. why was that not during, done during his presidency? Why was that not done while he was running for 2016? Yeah. Why was that not done during 2020? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just like they know that he's a threat. And they know that like what he's capable of. 
in the sense of he's, he is pro-American. Mm-hmm. He is pro-American. Course, yeah. He cares for the people. He is someone that, like, he comes from a, a, yes, a wealthy background, but he is very much for the people. Mm-hmm. You know, does his character sometimes align with, with his work as a leader, you know, as, as president? And all the, all the time, I do agree with that. I don't care much for it, you know, if I'm being real with you. I, mm-hmm. I really don't care much about, oh, he said this, he said that. Yeah. I get the perspectives and I understand it. I also respect it, but I, like me, Guillermo Bogan does mm-hmm. not care. Mm-hmm. I care about, hey, can you get the job done? Hey, do you care about the American people? Hey, do you care about the people you are leading in this country? That type of thing. Mm-hmm. And so I think, I think um, when you look at that narrative, yeah. Then it's like, okay, you can see between the two with numbers, stats, everything, how Trump during his four years was a lot more pro-American than Biden. Biden yeah. Biden's a wreck. Biden's destroying this country. Yeah, he's not even mentally cognitive no, anymore. And then that's not, not even biased. It's just it's just plain and silent. Yeah. So you like you literally have like people on the left who are just like I, I no, yeah. no to this guy. Like he's a yeah. joke. You've had people who are left leaning who didn't even vote for the 2020 election because they're like, there's no way like this guy can't be the, it, mm-hmm. you know? And so, and he's just doing himself even more do- dirty between the border crisis, inflation, um, even foreign policies. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. And so Trump, I'm hoping, you know, if he wins 2024, he can do it well and he, he reverses whatever. Right. So DeSantis, all right, let's talk about DeSantis and Vivek now. DeSantis is a leader. In my opinion, he's for the people. He's a very genuine person. Mm-hmm. He doesn't say, we will this, we will that. He says, if we can, if we're able to, we will do this, we will do that. He doesn't give false promises. Yeah. Um, I think um, where he screwed himself over, with he screwed himself over with a couple of things, but here's where he really did himself bad, was, and this is why I asked you if you saw the Republican debate. So basically, there was a moment where the reporters were asking him, or not him. They were asking all the guys, "Hey, if um if if Trump is innocent, if he's convicted of being innocent, whatever, um you know, will you still support him as president?" Mm-hmm. So all some of the other guys raised their hand right away. DeSantis looked around the room left and right, and then once he saw some hands raised, then he raised his hand, and that's where he did himself wrong because people are like, "Oh man, is he really pro Trump? Is he really is he a follower? Is he real? Is he genuine? You know that type of thing." Yeah. Um, which I think anyone in his position would possibly do the same thing because he's under a lot of pressure. Yeah. Like you got millions to be of, of the American people looking at him, mm-hmm. seeing like, what is he going to say? What is he going to do? Who is he teaming up with all this stuff? Right. Yeah. Um, so on the one hand, I understand that perspective, but on the other hand, it's like, man, like, you know, Trump does also come with a little bit of baggage, not even through his work as, or his policies, but just as a person through the stupid stuff he said, right? Yeah. And so I think I think that was a big thing that uh, did not look too good for him. And then Vivek. So Vivek, I have mixed feelings for because I saw, not that this is a viable thing, but I saw a clip on TikTok where when Obama introduced himself in, um, I don't remember when it was, in the in the Democratic debate, um, he goes, oh, now I know what you're wondering. Who is this uh, tall, skinny guy or whatever? Vivek said something similar in the debate, too. He's like, now I, I, you're probably wondering who I am and all this stuff. And it was a very similar description to what Obama said. Mm-hmm. And then even one, I think it was Charlie Chris pointed it out. So it's like, that's kind of that's kind of weird. That's kind of like, I'm not saying just because of that one thing. It's like, oh, well, yeah. I can't trust the guy. Yeah. But that's that's a bit <laughs> sketchy or weird to me. And then, um, you know, he comes from a, a hardworking background. Um, I think his parents are from like India or something. And, mm-hmm. you know, he, he he's built his way up to the top and. And it's great and stuff, but I just don't know enough to be like, oh, yeah, that's my guy. That's my president type of thing. He, yeah. the, the great and common thing that a lot of people are saying about Vivek Ramaswamy is the fact that he's young. He's young. Mm-hmm. He's he's pro-America, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, and he's trying to connect better with the younger There was a video of him with, like, Jake Paul the other day. And Jake Paul's not even involved with politics, but he was talking about that and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that that's, that's cool that he's seeking out young people yeah. and trying to get them more in politics. That's exactly what I'm looking for, honestly. So. Yeah. So that's that's a little bit on the candidate side. So, you know, I we've I think it's reiterated with the conversation, but just mm-hmm. in case if people lack brain cells, what is your political affiliation um, to start with? Um, yeah, I'm I'm Republican. Yeah, yeah. conservative. Yeah. yeah. So so what was the thought process on why you became conservative? Like, why are you conservative? Why why did that side mm-hmm. look more appealing versus left leaning or Democratic? Yeah. And then um, when was that moment where you knew, I guess, like, oh, yeah, like, this is common sense for me. Like, I'm conservative. Yeah, I think I think um, the win was, like, around 10th grade. 
um, when you just start thinking about like things on a moral plane, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, like before I've heard I've heard like I've heard these terms like abortion, right? But I, I didn't really know too much about it, and I've heard like about um, the LGBTQ stuff. Right? Back then, it was only LGBT, you know, it mm-hmm. hadn't they didn't add the Q yet. Um, so I, I was starting to think about these things, and um, it hits me like, okay, like yeah, abortion is abortion is very wrong, yeah. right? I I view abortion as the mass genocide of infants, right? Mm. I mean, millions over the past, what, 50, 60 years. Um, and the Liberal Party views it as, um, like, not only a basic human right to women, mm-hmm. that, um, you know, like, if you strip them of that, that'd be, like, monstrous, but they also view it as, like, like liberation of, like, like it, it, not equality, but like liberation of like, um, I guess all like uh, liberation of moral like more constraints. I yeah. guess kind of like yeah. like oh anyone can do what they want to basically, mm-hmm. um, which is just it's just crazy like how different um, the opposing viewpoints are. Yeah. Like with other disagreements, it's not as weighty, but. With something like abortion, it is like, mm-hmm. like Republicans or, or people who are pro life view it as the mass genocide of infants, mm-hmm. and um, Democrats, liberals look at it as a basic human right yeah. for all women. Yeah. So that's that. I think I know so much more goes into politics than abortion, but to me, abortion really is one of the most important um, political uh, matters. Which is why that's why I became. Or that's why I was. Um, conservative because yeah. of abortion, honestly. Gotcha. And then, so that was around tenth grade for you. Yeah. Okay. And then also because, um, just because of the, um, like the, the right, the right has its own problems, right? Yeah, for sure. The, there are corrupt politicians on both sides. Both sides, absolutely right. Um, but what the left is pushing with BLM and abortion and um, LGBTQ. LGBTQ community. It's yeah. it's actually indicative of something far more sinister, yeah. I think. Um, and they they really do. They really just like promote you being your own god. Like yeah. you, you can identify it whatever you want to as you know sexually. Yeah. You can you can do um, whatever you want with your body. Mm-hmm. You can do like all these different things, right? And I think that is. Um, you know, it doesn't sound so bad on paper, but I yeah. think it's very, very sinister. It is. Um, the place that it comes from, so. Yeah, it's 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 demonic behavior, too, if mm-hmm. I'm being honest with you. It's disgusting, and it's also very, like, very, 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 like, opposed to the image of how God made things to be. Mm-hmm. Whether it's, you know, having your own child. Yeah. And you made the choice, right? Because everyone, I, we're adults here. We know that sex was made within the boundaries of the context of marriage. Mm-hmm. And when you have a kid by quote unquote mistake and then you take it out of its misery yeah. to show him mercy um, yeah. because of your own choice, right? That mm-hmm. leads to that. And then you also have how God, you know, Genesis talks about um, God made them male and female. Mm-hmm. That's it. No third gender, no 75,000 genders. No, it's yeah. like male and female. And then you also look at just, you know, the way things were designed. A lot of it, Republicans aren't sane. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I want to make yeah. that clear. But a lot of it is the promotion that you see from the left that is like, oh, no, you can be whatever you want and make a own God of yourself. You yeah. Can do whatever makes you, yeah. you know. But the reality is that it all just brings you back to feeling empty. Yeah. And you also feeling regretful for what mm. you've done or what you claim Precisely, to be or whatever. Yeah. And that's, the, that's, that's where... It's 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 very important to be very cautious with what you're filling that hole in in your heart. Mm-hmm. You know, is it a higher power like people like to call it? Is it is it gonna be God? Is it gonna be Jesus? Is it gonna be yourself? Is it gonna be these gods you're making of yourself? So I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's the scary part. Yeah, I totally agree. Because um, if you if you follow those things out, if you follow like liberal media out to its ends, I mean you you come to a place of just I mean I mean total like depression and yeah. sadness. I mean, if you, if you really do liberate yourself of all like moral constraints, if you really become whatever you want to be sexually and, yeah. and, um, and do whatever you want to with your body, just do whatever you want in general. Yeah. I mean, that leads you to a very dark place. So yeah, that's, yeah, you just, I, I have to take a stand against the yeah 
the liberal party. I I just can't. So yeah, man. And you said tenth grade, so I want to tell you my story as well. Tenth grade Mm -hmm. was not the moment I was like, oh, I I am conservative. I know for sure I am, but. Mm -hmm. 10th grade for me, because I think there's a, how old are you? You're 20, right? 20, yeah. Yeah, so I'm 22. So, so um, two-year difference for you and I. So 2016, I was a sophomore in high school. Mm-hmm. And so um, I was homeschooled for all of high school, but there was one school year where, where basically, like, I went to regular school. It was, a, it was a private Christian school. And so a couple things on that. One was when Obama was basically going to be done being president. So you got people running and then. Um, you know, it was a big deal at that time um, because I think I went to the school like Oct- I want to say October or September around there. Mm-hmm. And so um, a couple things. One was I had a very, very liberal um, like English teacher. Mm-hmm. And so all, she would always brag and talk about how she was like famous on Twitter for like basically wailing on Trump. And so she would talk a lot about like, you know, how she didn't like Trump basically. And so... Um, from that, I I was like, man, this guy must sound like a bad guy. Like, man, he probably sucks or something. And I had no involvement with politics whatsoever. Yeah. Left, right, nothing. Like, I didn't really... All I knew was, oh, Obama's my president, and Obama's been my president since 2008. That's all I knew. Yeah. And so I, I heard about Bush, and I heard about all these guys, and I knew, like, oh, like, I wonder who Trump... Because I, honest to goodness, I did not know who Donald Trump was prior to him running for president because you a lot of people know him as like the businessman or he made a cameo in home alone he did all these things yeah but i didn't know who he was like i just knew oh he's run this guy's running for president Mm -hmm. and so there was that view of hearing a lot about about the from this english teacher the other thing too was so when i was in 10th grade i like to like make youtube videos and watch a lot of youtube so one of the guys I, i looked up to at the time was casey neistat so Casey Neistat made this video of basically and talking about who he's going to be voting for. Mm-hmm. And so he said, um, Hillary Clinton, I will be ho- voting for Hillary Clinton. And then he was talking about how Trump's like a, like a bigot. Um, he's, he, he's a fascist. He treats women like wrong and yeah. all that stuff. And so because I looked up to Casey Neistat and I was like, man, like if Casey Neistat says this, then, then it must be true, right? And so I feel so stupid for what I'm about to say. But this is a true story. So. Mm-hmm. In sophomore year, my, my, I'm pretty sure my family on my, my dad's side has always been conservative because they came from Venezuela, you know, communism, socialist. And yeah. so they knew how, what that did to their country. So they don't want that for the U.S. because they now live in the U.S. So I remember mm-hmm. in 10th grade, my uncle asked me, he goes, oh, Guillermo, if you could vote right now, because I was a minor, I was 16 at the time. If you could vote between Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, who would you vote for? And then I like boldly and was like, like very confident about it. I was like, oh, I'd vote for Hillary Clinton. Like Trump's a... Um, I didn't care about homosexuality and I, you know, I, I was whatever about it, but I was like, yeah, he, he mistreats women. There's so much controversy over his name and all this stuff. And Hillary, I think it'd be cool to have like a first female president. I didn't know how mm-hmm. corrupt Hillary was either. And like I said, I was 15, 16 at this yeah. time. So like, I didn't really have the concept of like, like reading into things, looking into things, knowing about people and their history and all that stuff with, with mm-hmm. uh, po- politics. And till this day, I cringe thinking that on i said that and i said it with confidence too and i was like man but but that just yeah. goes to show like like you know and i wasn't after that i wasn't really heavily involved with politics but that just goes to show like how when there's so much negativity and misinformation about people you you buy into it, especially mm-hmm. when people you look look up to yeah and so from there going on till 2019 i was like i was like um you know um a little bit with politics, nothing crazy. I just knew DeSantis was our governor, but I, I heard the name, but didn't really put the, the picture in the face together. Mm-hmm. But um, 2019 comes around, and that's when I get more involved with the stock market. So I, you always hear the thing about, oh, like when Trump tweets, the stock market either goes up or down, all this stuff. Yeah. And still it's like, oh, okay, whatever. But for me, like the it wasn't like this defining moment of, oh, yeah, you are now being put as conservative. It was just more so like, like no, like I am conservative. It's just like, this whole time I've always been conservative. I just didn't know it because that's where I give credit to, to Trump was the fact that Trump started a movement that um, I think a lot of conservatives do give credit to. And it's the mm-hmm. fact that like, hey, this is what America is. This is this is what's going on. And these, these are the people behind you too. These are the people responsible. Yeah. And so, and he would expose the corruption. And that's when everyone would hate on him, not like him, do whatever, right? Yeah. And so from that, I was like, man, I... I'm actually conservative. Like, I, I, I guess I knew because I, I had these values. You know, my parents come from Venezuela, communist country, socialist mm-hmm. country. Um, I am not in favor, and I'll say this, like, 
I've said this multiple times, I'm not in favor of the LGBTQ nonsense. I'm not in favor of woke ideology. I'm not in favor of forcing your beliefs upon someone in a way that is not respectful. Yeah. And that's what a lot of left-leaning people do, um, is that hey, if you don't agree, you are this. It's it's labeling and, and all this crap. Yeah. And so that was the thing. However, and that's where I want us to get into, is like 2020 was the mo- it was a chaotic moment, right? BLM, um, you know, COVID, uh, COVID all, of, yeah. all of this crap. So for me... I, did, I repented of this and I, I realized how wrong it was, but I had my faith placed in Donald Trump, not mm-hmm. Jesus. I was a believer, I was a Christian, um, or, or a claimed one, but I wasn't like a, like a, oh yeah, no matter what happens, I have my faith in Jesus, right? I was very big on like, no, Trump, it has to be Trump, Trump has to run, no, because if not, we're in trouble and blah, 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 right? Yeah. And so I think that is where, you know, I want to talk about faith and politics, right? So yeah. 2020, I handled a lot, of, a lot of things just inappropriately. I was not like like oh Jesus first under politics. Mm-hmm. It was it was old politics and then Jesus goes under under um, the politics, right? Yeah. Um. So like, I guess for you, right? What is what is the the thing for you where you try to be cautious with not idolizing the leader or the governor or whatever mm-hmm. or politics in general over Jesus? Does that make sense? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think it's just. Uh, like the the big the biggest part of that is just remembering who the biggest authority is, right? Yeah. And it's not it's not Trump, and it wasn't Hillary Clinton, mm-hmm. and it's not Joe Biden, it wasn't Barack Obama, it's it's not Ron DeSantis, it's not any of them, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's Jesus, it's God, yeah. um, and like no matter who's in power, like his, his will is going to be done either way. Mm-hmm. And something that I always think about is just like like conservatism can't unite and save this country, right? Yeah. Democrats cannot unite and save this country. Um, Joe Biden cannot unite and save this country. Donald Trump cannot unite and save this country, right? What what can unite and save this country? And it's Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think just constantly um, reminding yourself of that and trying to, I mean, like you can't you know, teach others that, and that's not what I mean, but to, to, to try and um, share that with others because that's really the only thing that can save us, right? There are certain people yeah. and certain um, socio-cultural things that take place um, that unite people, right? Always for a brief period of time, yeah. though, right? Like, let's look back in the Americas during World War II, right? Mm-hmm. Very, very united country, right? War brings people together. Yeah. At least people of the same country. Yeah. Um, or 9-11, too. That 9-11. I, heard, I, was, I, was, I was a baby, but I right? heard that, like, that was a big moment where everyone was together. They didn't care if you were yeah. there, right? Yeah, but... But look, that doesn't last. Yeah. And I don't know any any friendship, any um, um, like thing that like people working together that has lasted that doesn't have Jesus in it, right? Yeah. Um, I think Jesus is the only thing that perfectly um, keeps keep, like unites people and keeps it united. So yeah. I don't I don't look to any any uh, politician to fix. Our problems. I think some politicians can accomplish a lot of good things and do great things for the economy or or to like, with um, certain laws or whatever it may be, right? Yeah. But I I don't look to them to fix um, the problems in this nation because the problems are not in the government. The problems are in the people. Yeah. And right now the people aren't looking to Jesus. Yeah. For um for for guidance or yeah. for for what's right and wrong. Mm-hmm. Um. So. I think that's the most important part. Just remembering who's in charge, and yeah. it's Jesus. And Amen. You, even if someone else is in charge, if they're in pre- uh, like if they're the president, they don't have the ultimate say. So Jesus mm-hmm. does. So yeah. that's what I always think about. Yeah, dude, I remember twenty twenty. I was freaking out. I was like, no, it might be Biden. Da 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 da. Yeah. And as it started to like <clears throat> truly, by God's grace, grow and 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 know God personally, I realized like, yeah. Higher gas sucks. Yeah, taxes aren't doing too good. Yeah, the the policies in general aren't running too well in this country. I'm like, yeah, that sucks. Mm-hmm. But I still felt a lot more at peace because I knew like yeah. I was looking towards Jesus. I was looking towards God, knowing that, yeah, this world's on fire right now. Things aren't going too high, especially for the country. Like this yeah. country's declining. But my view on things and my narrative was the fact that this world is temporary, Jesus is forever. Mm-hmm. So I was I will always talk about and think about and, and, and marinate on Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Mm-hmm. The fact that we are not to conform to this world, but to renew our mind. What does it mean to renew? 
looking at God's word, looking at the at the food for the soul, looking at the word of life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what's given me peace, knowing that yeah, Biden sucks. Don't get me wrong, but there's something better than if it's if it's uh, Trump or Biden or DeSantis or whoever. Yeah, and it is Jesus. Is it, it is that fulfillment? And dude, I've I've lived I've been living comfortably. I'm not talking about like from an economical scale. I just meant like in life mm-hmm. comfortably in this not being a lukewarm comfort uh, person but just more so like um like being comfortable in jesus not in the world if that makes sense yeah you know? yeah and so I, I think that's where I'm, i stem from mm-hmm. yeah. and i and i think that's like it's so great that we get to live that way because like i look around and there are a lot of people who are not at peace yeah there are a lot of people who, who live in constant fear um or like people our age who, who don't want it, like who don't know about politics because they don't want to know because they see all the anger and hate yeah. it breeds. They see um, how much dread just circles around that, and um, and it's because like people are looking for politics yeah. or who's in power to bring them peace, but it, it's not able to. It, it wasn't it wasn't made to politics. wasn't able um, has never been able to do that, and yeah. it's it's always been Jesus. So yeah. yeah, I think it's just important to you know for people to shift and realign. Um, where they look to for yeah. comfort. I think, I think too, though, we shouldn't also, in my opinion, I don't think we should excuse or put of absence, like also addressing things that need to be addressed that, mm-hmm. that are, that are connected or correlated towards the Bible. So I think like, for instance, we should be talking about, um, like abortion is a big one. And I think that's yeah. one big thing that the churches lack the balls on talking about is because they always talk about, um, Oh, it's a political thing. We don't talk about politics. No, no, no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah. You're going to tell me that the taking of the innocent beings that are born or are, are, are living being in a woman's like stomach in the room. Mm-hmm. You're going to tell me that's political. Yeah. I don't, I don't agree with that. I, I think there are other things too. That we should always, you know, be very cautious of and, and talk about and address, but in a way that it's not, pointing back towards the presidents or pointing back towards the power, but it is pointing back towards scripture. You know, mm-hmm. what does scripture have to say? What does the Bible have to say? You know, when you look at the Bible being the ultimate source of authority, then everything else is, is as it is, right? Because yeah. God is the word. The word of God is God, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think when you look at that perspective, then it's like, all right, hey, here's what we're going to be talking about today and not being scared of, of either cancer cult or cancer, excuse me, cancel <laughs> culture yeah. or just like, like, Oh, what's the church going to say? Are they going to respond? You know? So I don't, which is what I don't agree with. Um, and I, I never will stand for just there's like the idea of woke ideology in general, mm-hmm. or also being unapologetic about your sin where you're like blatantly like promoting sin and being like, no, it's okay to be gay and Christian. Yeah. No, it's okay to, to, you know, want to murder your child. No, it's okay to do all these things. And believe it or not, man, a lot of, a lot of churches, um, they, they are either directly or indirectly promoting that type of ideology, which is not, yeah. it's not it's awful. Yeah. 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 And it, it goes against everything. Um, it just goes against everything that Christianity is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all that to say, I think, yeah, I just, I can't, I can't get too caught up in politics because it's, yeah. The old, like you said, the ultimate authority is Jesus. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's the answer. It's Jesus. Jesus is in charge. Not like all this stuff is good, right? We a, a, a Republican in power would probably be better for this country than a Democrat. But at yeah. the end of the day, it's it's Jesus. That's Amen. who we need to be the leader. So, yeah, bro, dude. Well, is there anything else we need? we've talked about it all? I think between um, faith and politics, the the three runner ups, mm-hmm. um, competent versus incompetent people. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it that, that yeah, uh, man. we got to talk about. Yeah. Guys, thank you for listening to this podcast. Guys, we're gonna be having Caden on for a lot of other episodes. So if let's you hate go. Him, if you hate let's him, go. Comment down below. If you love him, comment down below as well. <laughs> if you think he's okay, comment down below as well if you're on YouTube. But be sure to subscribe to this channel. Be sure to um, follow us on Spotify. Be sure to follow us or subscribe on Apple Podcasts as well. Follow us at Bogan Everywhere Podcast on Instagram or on TikTok do all those things man but game do you want to drop your your instagram i know you want to because you're cool yeah so i got i don't even use it but i'll i'll drop it i uh underscore caden olsen underscore check me out thanks for having me on man i really appreciate it i appreciate you brother oh that was nice see ya